What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the new and eagerly anticipated third solo studio album by Mr. Jack White. A Detroit native, this solo album sees him going in a weirder and wilder direction. It's called Boarding House Reach. And before we get into our review today, did you notice I'm looking a little bit, I'm looking a little scruffy over here. Let's take a second to thank our sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. A big thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. Take a minute to learn about their great product and help support the channel by checking them out. Now look, if you're like me and sick of the nonsense at the store, now's the time to try out Dollar Shave Club. Shopping for razors in stores is impossible for someone like me who has no clue what to ask for, plus the people who are working aren't able to really help steer me in the right direction because they're not sure either. Plus, I'm pale as a ghost, just like the subject of the video today. Not just any razor is gonna cut it for someone with sensitive skin. For a limited time, Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their shit shower shave starter set to new members for only $5. This starter set features their executive razor and three trial-sized versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean. In your first box, you will receive their amazing shave butter, body wash to keep you feeling fresh and clean, and one wipe Charlie's butt wipes because obviously we need the butt wipes too. Come on, we need to stay fresh and clean all around. You will also receive their executive razor which includes their premium weighty handle and a full cassette of cartridges. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for just a few bucks a month. Ladies in the audience, don't think that this offer is just for men. It works perfectly for shaving legs, pits, and uh, Whatever else you might need to shave. It's only $5, give it a try. This offer is exclusively available for my viewers at dollarshaveclub.com slash ARTV. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash ARTV. The top link in the description down below. Now this is a whole lot better. Anyways, getting back to Jack White, his third solo effort. You probably already know who Jack White is, uh, maybe from the White Stripes. Uh, a little bit of a big deal. The Racketeers, the Dead Weather, obviously white solo stuff as well. He's a very uh, kind of charismatic individual, but also kind of a strange one. He is very, very passionate about music, though. He's made that clear time and time again that it's his most expressive art form, and he cares about it very dearly. He recently opened, as a part of Third Man Records, a second vinyl pressing plant in his hometown of Detroit, and it's the first new vinyl pressing plant to be opened in decades. That just shows you that the art form in terms of vinyl is great. Growing. I'm honestly, for the most part, pretty much a fan of anything that Jack White touches. I'm at least going to check it out from his film stuff that he did, like the song with Alicia Keys, Another Way to Die for the James Bond film, or even The Dead Weather. And I know a lot of people are kind of mixed on them, but I've enjoyed their projects, The Racketeers as well, obviously Consolers of the Lonely Broken Boy Soldiers, I feel to be great albums, and the entire White Stripes discography. I've done numerous videos on them, including a top 10, and I even enjoyed both of Jack White's solo albums. Although Blunderbuss, I feel, is more of a classic for Jack White, and Lazaretto was a bit of a mixed bag, but still an album and a record that I own and I still occasionally listen to. It was just maybe a little bit too country for my personal taste. That doesn't mean it's bad. It just personally for me was a little bit more out there. But this new album, Boarding House Reach, is a completely different direction for Jack White. In fact, it finds him in uncharted territory with more electronic and abrasive sounds, but also spoken word and slower stuff. It's just a weird mix that I'm not sure anyone other than Jack White would be able to make work. I may be talking positively about the record now, but that was not my initial impression of Boarding House Reach. In fact, it kind of made my head spin. This record can be a bit dizzying, especially on its first few listens, just because it has the spoken word passages and some of the transitory tracks, and also the more abrasive in-your-face ones, like the single over and over and over. That track, I have to say, hands down, probably my favorite on the entire album. Piece. Sorry for the spoiler alert, but this track is fantastic. It's probably the most Jack White styled track that you're going to get and find, especially if you're looking for something more like the White Stripes or even Jack White's other solo stuff. He called this track his White Whale, so to speak. It was originally for a project with Jay-Z, but that never came to fruition. You probably know that they're like title friends, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, Jack White was involved there as well. But he called it his White Whale because this track really never came to fruition. He was never able to stick a harpoon in it and say it was done until now. Apparently it just finally came together. And those riffs are fiery as hell. I love it. It just instantly gets stuck in your head. And the backing vocals, almost a little like gospel, but also like trembly, scary. 
scared mixed with, I don't know, a big dose of Jack White, it is perfection. You jump from cuts like that to some of the more slow, brooding ones, ones that might not take off until their second half, and some of the ones that are so extremely unique, you know that they're Jack White. In the past, I have to admit that I've never necessarily come to Jack White for like, you know, lyrics that I relate to or ones that I can necessarily decipher upon the first few listens. I listen to him for the instrumentation and I think that the lyrics are obviously something that come with the territory. I just don't always find myself really trying super hard to comprehend them because while there is a message that I'm sure is packed into many of these tracks, I don't always see them as the most important thing. That being said, I would really love an explanation of track number two, Why Walk a dog because that one seems kind of dark and it seems like it's talking about people who own pets and that sort of thing and that one has this really weird synth line going on it and a drum machine everything else that's stirred up on that track it just has me kind of going like what? There's the curiosity of songs like that, and also Esmeralda Steals the Show, which I find to be great. It's something that's so charming, it's poetry, and it seems like somebody's getting ready for the big night. They're about to give a speech, and they're observing things and talking about the audience. Everybody's glued to their electronic gadgets and everything like that. And then she comes out and just drops the bomb on them and then walks off stage. It's really, really cool, but also really weird. And if you're looking for, like, more more of like a sung Jack White album, there's more spoken word stuff than I think a lot of people are going to be expecting. I do happen to really like the lyrics that come on the track right after that, get in the mind shaft, even though they are kind of vocoded and almost feel like a little bit daft punky or something like from the 90s, it's still kind of a cool transition. And then we get into what's done is done, which is an almost like hip hop influence track, which is okay for Jack White. I mean, I like it. It feels like blues meets hip hop meets alternative and Jack White and it has my head spinning, like I said before. I feel like this album can have some really alarming moments, and you kind of have to wrestle it to the ground, so to speak, to truly get into some of these songs. And one of those for me was track number five, Hyper Misophoniac. This is a track that I believe refers to like somebody really just getting startled by noises and having these recurring, like not nightmares, but just certain trigger sounds that really set them off. And it's funny because this track obviously has a very recurring prominent electronic swirl to it and some weird drums stabby pianos and even some riffs that kick in in the second half this song is like a madman's making but at the same time it's oddly great the lyrics are nothing profound it's talking about you know robbing a bank and everything like that but the way that it plays out, I can't help but be intrigued and want to give it more listens. In terms of singles from this record, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the majority of those. I only allowed myself to listen to the two initial ones that were released, Connected by Love and Respect Commander, obviously the latter of those being the one that I liked more. I did a track review on it, and I would say that I still kind of stand by that. Connected by Love is fine, but it's kind of like love interruption for me. I think obviously that track is better, but here this feels like another, like, almost organ-led track, and it just feels a little bit more limited. I mean, it still has some great flourishes in there, don't get me wrong, but this just feels like a little bit more basic, especially in the context of this record. It really doesn't fit all that much. Respect Commander is something that I would compare to Highball Stepper off of Lazaretto. It's a fantastic moment that really gets me amped up. I love the way that it starts off. The drums really start to click. You get into the groove of it. And then, obviously, Jack White comes in. She commands my respect. It's a really cool phrase. And the way that Jack White continues on with this track, he's able to morph it into something else. And then the guitar solo is fantastic. That and over and over and over have the best guitars on the entire record, in my opinion. Ice Station Zebra is a great nod to this. 60s and I love the drumming on this one also the pianos it feels like almost like a continuation of the white stripes which obviously I know the white stripes are gone but Jack White has even said himself that his solo work is kind of a continuation of the white stripes because he was doing the majority of the stuff there other than the rhythmic stuff that Meg White was handling and on this track Ice Station Zebra I really feel like they hit one of the pinnacles of this new album Boarding House Reach everything you've ever learned is another one that features some spoken word that's in the intro and then it gets into Jack White and he's putting these phrases out there that get kind of dominant and almost a little bit fierce and aggressive and I like that feeling even though it's not your typical song structure by any means as the instrumentation starts to really fire up in the background as well this song gets cooking big time and once it takes off once that fuse is lit there's no going back. 
I will say that I'm very divided on the pacing of this record because it kind of shakes you up and leaves you feeling all over the place. And like I said before, you're not exactly sure where to focus your attention sometimes. And one of the distracting moments for me was the single corporation. Even though I like that one, it is very simple lyrically and it also has these really loud, high piercing shouts from Jack White, which are sure impressive, but they take place way too often for me. They just really are like nails on a chalkboard. It's funny that he brings up the whole misophoniac thing because that's what it's like to me, kind of triggering. I'm also divided on some of the other tracks on this record and the amount of spoken word passages that are included here, even though I like a good majority of them. It does get a bit tedious. I'm also not a huge fan of Why Walk a Dog or even What's Done is Done because of the weird genre fusion there. It's something that I kind of like the melody, but it might take more time. I'm just not sure. After a good handful, I'm talking like 10 listens to this album, I'm still conflicted on it, so it could go either way in the future. There's obviously some great songs here, and the final one that I want to highlight is the closing track, Humoresque. This is an amazing piece, one of my absolute top favorites here, and if you don't know the history behind it, it was actually originally written in Alcatraz by the notorious gangster Al Capone in the 1930s. Now, leave it to Jack White to be that eccentric individual that bids on the piece and actually buys it for more than $18,000. He bought the composition, and now here it is on his record. Obviously, it was originally composed by someone else, but Jack White's rendition here is just so smooth and almost comforting to me, and it's weird to know that it was written by a gangster, Al Capone. This track was probably written to somebody that was missing outside of the walls of prison, and it's really just like a feather floating down. Imagine the opening credits to Forrest Gump, and this track feels like the soundtrack to that in a way. It just soothes me, and I really love the way that the pianos kind of hit a crescendo in the second half. It really just carries this album out on a very gentle note, but it's so touching and so beautiful. I can't praise it enough. Overall, I would definitely say that for the most part, this is a successful experiment for Jack White. Do I hope that he will return to some of his roots more in the future, some more bluesy stuff, some more alternative and guitar-driven stuff? Absolutely, but there's nothing wrong with experimenting on this record in this style. I think that he does pull it off, but at the same time, it can be very spotty, and it can be hard to listen to. You really have to kind of clear your schedule and your mind before you listen to this album, because otherwise, I feel like you'll just get distracted and you won't be able to truly access what this album has to offer. Not that it's always hitting perfection, but still, just kind of clear your schedule before you get into it. These are all just my thoughts, guys, but I want to know what you guys think. For me personally, I'm going to give this a strong 3.5 out of 5. It could be upgraded to a light 4 at some point, but for now, I think I'm going to keep it 3.5. Anyways, sound off your thoughts down below. Please drop a like on this video to let me know that you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. It is the top link down below. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this review, and if you do check them out, please just know that it does support the channel. Thank you so much to everybody that is supporting me on Patreon as well. If you want to see a couple of other Jack White videos, then tap right here. Socials in the description, and I'll see you soon on ARTV.